Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. It's Brianna Ray from BriIY here to bring you more knitting fun. Naturally I learned about this particular tool that I'm going to be using today from TikTok, but I found an amazing machine that creates something called I-cords, which are like tiny um, loops almost of material. I made about five feet of this I-cord and I am going to do a couple of projects today with the tool, show you how to use it, and uh, just have some fun with some texture today because there's nothing I like more than things that feel fun. <laughs> so the tool that I'm using today is the Tulip I-Cord Knitter. Um, I'm, I feel like it was called actually something else, but it is, um, and I, I just searched up I-Cord Knitting Machine and this had the best reviews. It was also the most expensive, it was about $50 which I do feel like is a lot, but with as quickly as I can create things with this, much like my other knitting machine, I don't feel like it was a bad investment. There were some other ones that do something similar but had way worse reviews and frequently uh, buyers said that they couldn't quite get it to work as efficiently as this guy. In the same way that my large scale knitting machine might be different than my Centro like circular knitting machine is that this guy has metal hooks on it and the Centro and several other um, less high quality knitting machines have plastic pieces which can easily break and don't have as much slide. Also in my experience I feel like the metal slides a lot easier compared to the plastic which prevents a lot of snags. The machine itself is actually pretty intuitive. You string your yarn through here, wrap it around just like in the same way that we did with our large scale knitting machine and you just rotate it around and it creates the I cord which will slowly string it through the bottom. So let's let's test it out. First things first, we're gonna string this through here and send it straight through the bottom. This is kind of a multicolored slash color changing um, yarn that I have here. I'm going to send it all the way through. This isn't quite straight so it's giving me a hard time. But you're just going to kind of poke it all the way down and as it gets through the bottom it came with this little weight here. So uh, we're supposed to tie a knot in it just to make sure it doesn't slide out. So I'll tie a knot in the bottom, tighten it up, and then you can push this button to open up the hole in the weight pop your material through and close it so that it kind of gets stuck, making sure that the knot is on the bottom so if it does kind of slide out, it gets stuck and doesn't continue all the way as it has here. So I'm just gonna tighten this up, rest it underneath. This weight is what's gonna keep the uh, material flowing through. I also found that kind of holding the material here keeps a nice tension right um, as it goes through and just keeps everything moving a lot smoother. Definitely keep an eye on it, but um, grabbing it like this, it's gonna cause a little bit of a hand cramp, but as long as you know how much you need, you should be fine. The tool is designed to rotate clockwise. So again, I'm going to keep a nice tension right here and I'm going to rotate clockwise until it catches under this first hook. And it's going to attempt to catch under the second hook. We are going to unattach it and pull it around back so that it kind of creates a more consistent line through the middle. We also want to make sure that all these latches on the hooks are facing down. And again, we don't want it to catch on this one. We want it to go behind, so I'm going to push it behind and that is going to get us at our starting point. So you can see it just kind of has that one line through the middle. Now, again, keeping this tension, all we have to do is Rotate clockwise and it's going to start catching on all of them. So it catches on the first, the second, the third, the fourth, and so on. And we are simply just going to continue rotating this clockwise until we reach the length we want. For this one, I'm just going to go maybe like wristlet length uh, and I'm going to hyperlapse through that. All right, so here you can see that we have kind of kept things going. I am going to snip this off. This only took me about less than a minute to do, um, which is I think the beauty of the material. So I am going to continue to rotate so that the last loops pop off and pull it through. 
and you can see we have our lovely I cord, which is a nice uh, wrist length to wrap around and say maybe add your keys or something of that nature. So this is currently um, still active. So we are gonna have to kind of tighten that together. So I'm gonna go grab a quick yarn needle and show you how to finish up the I cord. All right, so you can see at the end of each of these points here, this is actually a loop, another loop of yarn. So I am going to take a yarn needle threaded with some extra yarn and poke my way through first loop. Probably could have grabbed one of my plastic ones that isn't as um, large, <laughs> maybe a little pointier, but it shouldn't matter much. Perfect, and now we have, we're kind of back at the beginning, that yarn that I started, and we're just gonna pull it tight. And I'm going to tie it into a knot to keep it from unraveling. And I'm gonna tie it in with this white a little bit as well, just to be sure everything is kosher, and we'll cut any excess links off later. Don't forget to unhook from your base here. Um, and yeah, so here is our first little eye cord um, that I'm going to turn into a wristlet. This is a nice stretchy yarn, so it does kind of expand a little bit. I really like the pattern, actually. I didn't think, I don't, I'm not really a big fan of multicolored yarns, um, but I actually quite like the way that this looks. Um, and it's like shockingly even on both sides, so I feel like, yeah, I'm actually really a fan of this. All right, and to finish it, I am just going to come into this collection of key rings I have. I'm feeling like silver is the right for this one. Um, I am going to simply tie it. And for the lark's head knot, you would simply pull it through about halfway and then take the looser ends and go through the loop And pull up. I want to make mine nice and tight. And then you can wrap it around your wrist like this to carry around your keys. I'm going to cut my looser ends here. And yeah, that is an easy wristlet keyring chain that I made in less than five minutes. For extra security, I might even kind of sew these guys together um, just because they're a little bit loose for my taste, but um, it does uh, it does function, I suppose. And it also makes kind of a cute little heart if you play with it, that's fun. Something else that I think is really cool about this tool that I'm not actually prepared to try today because I don't have the proper um, materials, meaning fishing line, um, is that this can actually create eye cords out of beaded material. So I would love to try that on another day. Um, I think I'm just maybe gonna need to get some extra materials to try that out. But for today, just kind of looking at the things that we can do with the textile part of it, not bad. All right, so now moving on to what I'm doing with this uh, sample piece that I showed you at the very beginning. So this is the first one that I ever did. You can tell it kind of started off a little bit messy because I wasn't actually paying attention to what it was supposed to be doing. But this is about five feet worth of pink fuzzy eye cord um, with live ends still. I stuck this kind of crochet hook through all of my loops so that I can easily connect it later. But um, it's probably not gonna work out that way because I saw on TikTok, as you can imagine, Sorry, please excuse my cat having the zoomies around me. Um, but I did find a really cool craft that was um, wire bending, like bending wire and then wrapping it in the eye cord to create like a cool textile piece. So I have some wire and I'm going to bend it into my channel name and see if I can kind of recreate that TikTok. 
So here is the wire I got. Um, I know wire is normally measured in like gauges, but this was not. This is just aluminum wire that was described as two millimeters in thickness, which is exactly what I wanted. Um, it bends super easily. It cuts really nicely, even with my Dollar Tree wire cutters. Um, and this is what I am going to use to create my shape in cursive. So what I have done is I went into Google Drive, as you can imagine, um, and I wrote out the channel name, Brie IY, um, and this is called League Script, and I did this in size 400. I still feel like this is a little bit small, but also I feel like, you know, five feet of i cord isn't even really that much and I'm honestly afraid I'm not going to have enough to get all the way through. So eventually we're kind of going to for this look where it's like this whole knitted um, logo sort of style. So I don't know if I actually even have enough. Um, if not, I think the proof of concept will be there or I'll just try to bend my wire into a smaller word to test this out for today. Um, but if you wanted to recreate this, this is what I did. Um, and I'm going to start off by taking my wire because I don't want it to poke through the yarn at all. I'm going to take some needle nose pliers, which you can get at any craft store or probably your dad, grandfather, uncle's uh, tool collection. And I'm just going to pinch at the end and rotate it in so that it creates a loop and it doesn't poke out at all. From here, I am just going to kind of follow the shape that the letters created and start going up and bending around any edges and just kind of frequently checking in to make sure that it is creating the right shape. And three, two, one. It's not perfect, uh, but it's close. Um, so the big issue obviously is that this B and this R are not connected, this E and this I are not connected in the way that they really should be. So I did have to take um, some liberties with this. What I'm going to do now, and before I go too far, I did wanna kind of address this because I did notice in the TikTok where the girl was kind of showing how she did hers, they were like, why didn't you add the I cord first? and then bend it later. She said this provided a cleaner look almost every time, so this is why I am doing it this way. Um, and I am going to go through the thrilling struggle, I'm sure it's going to be, of stringing my eye cord onto, um, onto this now. So I'm going to release my live edge here, and I'm going to find the opening and insert this baby in here. I actually feel like maybe a semi-anticipated concern was that this loop was gonna be too ginormous. So I also have these um, <laughs> flat nose pliers that I can use to probably flatten that a little bit and make it a little bit easier to wrap things onto. As I'm sure you were able to tell from that, I um, straightened it out and then attached it that way. It was way easier. Um, <laughs> that's all I have to say about that. Actually, I'm gonna pop this towards the back. So this is the start technically here. And this is the end that I still need to fill in. Um, I am super pleased with the fact that this fit everything. Um, it went um, really just as far as I needed it to, but it did, it did stretch a bit. So I did uh, stretch a fair amount. Um, and really, I don't want to yarn so any of this, I would rather take a very small, uh, similarly colored thread. I might have to go with white because I don't know if I have anything in this soft baby pink um, and close up the holes on either end and cut the edges off so that it does not fray and we'll be done with the project. All right, I stitched them up a bit, a lot better looking in some areas. Um, yeah, not bad. And there we have it, cute little, really a wall decoration. 
um, obviously, because it doesn't really stand or do anything on its own. Um, I can probably do something like that for a picture. That's not bad. Um, it's not super easy to read, especially not without the um, dots on the eyes or without like a really nice solid um, white background or black background or something. But overall, I mean, it did the job, didn't it? So um, it could be a lot worse. I'm actually, I love the way that the texture feels. It's a very fuzzy, like soft baby, um, baby yarn, I guess, like the ones that they always recommend you use for like baby blankets when you go into the craft store. So it's very soft. I love the texture. I think it looks super cool up close. Um, you can see kind of all the stitches when you get up and up and close. And I love the way that it looks on this almost even better because you can really see all like the, the details. It looks super handmade. Um, again, this, this bugs me a fair bit. I'm totally gonna sew those together because it's not cute. Um, but overall, I mean, the projects are super easy. The machine was a little bit on the expensive side, but I feel like these are really cool things that you can make, customize, and I love them a lot, and I hope that you did too. So with all that said, I wanted to thank you so, so much for watching. If you like what you saw, feel free to like and subscribe. I do put out new videos every Sunday at noon Eastern Standard Time, and I would love for you to be here for the next one. Thanks again so, so much, and I hope to see you then. Bye. Another option, of course, would be to reverse the Lark's head knot so that it tightens down here and looks more like that so it's nice and clean on the top which I think looks plenty good to me. Love it. <laughs>